Hello, this is Richard Gao. I'm from trademark department of Linda Liu and Partners. And today I would like to share with you a topic of trademark non-use cancellation in China. First of all, I'd like to share with you uh, statistics about Chinese trademarks. As you can see in this chart, there is a gradual increase of the number of Chinese trademarks. By July of this year, the valid trademark registration volume in China has reached more than 40 million registrations. So this is a huge number of registrations. If you want to file your new trademark in China, you are likely to encounter some prior registration obstacles. In order to clear these obstacles, you have to take some actions against these prior marks. One of the commonly used strategies against the prior marks is non-use cancellation. According to uh, statistics from the CNIPA in the first half of 2019, over 70% of trademarks were successfully canceled. So non-use cancellation. If you want to file non-use cancellation, first you have, you have to file an applicant. Luckily, there is no limit on the qualification of the non-use cancellation. According to law, any entity or individual they may request of a non-use cancellation with the trademark office. The burden of proof is mainly on the registrant, but thin IPA now becomes a little bit stricter in examining the preliminary non-use materials submitted by the applicant. So now we recommend the client to conduct an in-depth investigation before filing a non-use cancellation. When, non a trade, when a trademark become available for non-use cancellation, so this is different between a Chinese national application and a international trademark. For Chinese national trademark, the cancellation can be filed at any time in three years after the registration. But for an international registration, the non-use cancellation shall be filed in the three years after the prescribed 12 or 18 month period lapse, or if the trademark is rejected and later approved through a refusal review, then the cancellation shall be calculated on the date of the decision of approval. If you file a non-use cancellation against the, the trademark of a foreign registrant, who will receive the notification? So this is also different between national registration and international registration. For national registration, usually the registrant will have to design, designate it. For national registration, the regi for national registration, the registrant shall designate a domestic contact. When a non-use cancellation notification is issued, it will first serve to the domestic contract of the foreign registrant. For better service, the TRIMA office, they will also send the notification to the TRIMA agency who recently handled related matters of this trademark. But for international registration, as there is no domestic registrant, for international registration, as there is no trademark agency in the filing and the prosecution process, the notification will be served to the registrant directly or to its foreign representative. 
But if there is any trademark agency who served the registrant for this trademark, the trademark office they will also copy this agency of the notification. So here's the useful tips. If the trademark of uh, international registration is registered, we think it would be advisable to entrust a reliable Chinese agency to obtain a certified copy of the registry certificate. The certificate will help to prove you enjoy the right in enforcement. Also, when your international registration is protected, you can entrust a reliable Chinese agency to obtain a certified copy of the registration certificate. For one thing, it will help you to prove you enjoy the right in China and, and will be helpful in enforcement. On the other hand, when your trademark encountered a non-use cancellation and the notification will be served to the agency so that you will timely receive notification. When you received the notification and you will have two months to make a response, envelope of the notification here is a very important evidence to prove the data receipt and to calculate the responding due date. So please careful preserve the envelope because in the envelope, there's a barcode and through the barcode, you can trace the delivery of the notification. This is a very important proof of the date of receipt. Here is the procedures of the non-use cancellation. In the non-use cancellation, we have three stages. The non-use cancellation stage, the review stage, and the litigation stage. In the first stage, after the filing of non-use cancellation and the registration, they will make a response and submit the use evidence. The treatment office, they will examine based on the evidence submitted by the registration in the, this process. And the evidence is not exchanged, but the Chima office, they will summarize the evidence in its decision. If either party is not satisfied with the decision, it may file a review with the CNIPA. And then it comes to the non-use cancellation review. In this procedure, the evidence will be exchanged and applicant of the cancellation, they have the access to review the evidence submitted by the registrant and have a chance to file a cross-examination opinion by pointing out the defects and the validity of the evidence. And then the CNIPA, they will make a decision. If either party is still satisfied with the review decision, they may file a court litigation. According to our experiences, in all the stages, if you can submit new valid use evidence, and they are likely to be admitted. So in preparing the use evidence, there are some key elements, period, legal users, whether the use is within China, and whether the goods or services matches the designated goods of the registration, and whether the registered trademark image is consistent with the trademark in use, and whether the evidence could form a complete chain of evidence to prove the use in commerce. So the first element is the period. When you receive the notification and you will notice there is a period 
listed in the notification. And in principle, valid use evidence shall be within the period. Evidence out of the period are unlikely to be admitted, but there are some exceptions. One exception is that if the evidence is out of the period, but the evidence could collaborate with other evidence within the period, and still the evidence may be treated as valid use evidence. The other exception is if the evidence could prove the holder has real intention to use the trademark and made preparations for use, it is still possible for the trademark office of the court to admit such use evidence as valid evidence. For example, in the URUS non-use cancellation case, the company Lamborghini, they submitted some media report and promotional evidence within the period. And they also submitted the, some evidence showing that vehicles bearing the trademark were sold to China after the period. So in, consider, in consideration so in consideration of the old evidence, the court considered that the evidence as a whole could prove that the company had made valid preparations. Uh, the other exception is if the evidence could prove the holder has real intention to use and made proper preparation for the use. The use evidence out of period may still be admitted. For example, in the URUS non-use cancellation case, the use evidence submitted by the Lam Lamborghini company, including some pr promotional evidence and some media report within the period, plus they submitted some records showing that vehicles bearing the trademark has been sold to China later. And finally, the court made the judgment confirming the use of the trademark to be valid. Another key element of the use evidence is the legal user. As a common sense, the legal user of the trademark will include registrant and licensed user. That is, trademark licensees. But according to the latest trademark examination guidelines, users whose use is not against the will of the registrant, such as the use of shareholders, affiliated companies, distributors, sellers, etc. of the registrant, could be still deemed as legal users. For example, in the IT Express non-use cancellation case, the holder was the shareholder of IT Express company, and the use of the mark by the company still be deemed as not against the will of the holder and is tre was treated as the legal user of the trademark. Another key element of use evidence would the region. According to the trademark law, the valid use of the trademark shall be within the mainland China. But the use in greater China regions such as Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan is not admitted in practice. For, for example, in numerous non-use cancellation case, the court found that the performer invoices showed that the goods were de delivered to Kulong, Hong Kong, and cannot show the trademark was used in mainland of China. And finally, the use was not admitted. So if the distributor of the client is in Hong Kong, so we always recommend them to collect some further use evidence showing that the goods bearing the mark were later actually sold to mainland China with the Hong Kong distributor. Another information is 
The trademark used in OEM, original equipment manufacturer, is commonly admitted as valid trademark use. Here we come to the goods and service. Here comes to the goods and services. According to the law, the registered trademark shall be used on the goods and services designated in the trademark registration certificate. As you may know, China adopts the NIST classification, but we have some unique subclass systems. According to the guideline, goods or services falling into the same subclasses are considered similar. So the CNRPA examiners abide by the classification of similar goods and services in which each needs classification. So the CNRPA examiners abide by official classification of similar goods and services. And each needs class is divided into multiple subclasses. And in principle, only goods or services under the same subclass are similar. So if the use evidence could prove valid use of the trademark on one item of goods services, the trademark registration will only be maintained on similar goods and services, while the registration on dissimilar goods and services will be cancelled. For example, in this case, the registration they provided valid use evidence on shirts. So the thing IPA are likely to confirm the valid use on shirts and will also maintain the registration on the goods clothing and trousers. But on the dissimilar goods, including the, the goods shoes, Scarf, hands, gloves, etc., will be cancelled as they are dissimilar with the goods in use. But if you use the trademark on the goods outside of the designated goods of the registration, even if the goods are similar, it is possible that these use may not be admitted. For example, in this non-use cancellation case, the registrant provided use evidence on orange juice, but the registration designate only the goods purified water. Even if they constitute similar goods, still the use is not admitted. Another important element is the trademark image. In principle, the trademark image shall be consistent with the same in the certificate. In practice, a slight change of the trademark may be admitted. For example, in this case, the holder right registered the trademark with the small letters Adventure Park in tra register trademark image. But in actual use, they delete the adventure park and replace it with another word. But still, the trademark office, they decided that this belonged to the valid use of the register trademark. But there is a substantive change of the trademark image in actual use, and it may not be admitted as valid use of the registered trademark, especially when the use of the trademark point, pointing to another registered trademark of the registered chain. For example, in the Kali and device non-use cancellation case, as the evidence shows that the registration used by registration is another trademark, and the evidence cannot reflect the use of the cancelled trademark, so the, the trademark is finally cancelled. 
Another important element of use is the trademark use shall be commercial use, not token use. For example, in our non-use cancellation case, the registration they only submitted one piece of VAT invoice, which was issued just 10 days before the end of the pre prescribed period. And the judge considered the use to be invalid because they think the registered chain, they do not have the real intention to use the trademark, but the use was solely for defensive purpose to prevent non-use cancellation. And also the use in internal transactions between related companies is also invalid. For example, in this non-use cancellation case, the registered chain is the supervisor of A company and the legal representative of shareholders of B company. And the trademark used in the transaction between A and B companies is deemed as internal use and not as open use. So the, uh, the use was not admitted in this case. So when you prepare a non-use cancellation, and you have to submit some use evidence. Typically, the registration, they will submit some contracts, invoices, payment records, other letters, delivery notices, and catalogs, etc. But some mere evidence, including the catalogs, company websites, product photos, exhibition photos, advertisements, they are considered insufficient. The, the most common evidence is contract, distribution contract, other letters. So if you sign signed a contract with another company, and it is better to include your trademark into it. And if you issue a non-use cancellation if you issue a distribution contract, it's better also to include the uh, trademark into it. After the contract is concluded, and you will, ensure, you will issue an invoice. But for most foreign companies, the invoice are considered as self-made evidence and weak in, uh, in proof. So to enhance the evidence, we think it is better to submit some payment record to which can collaborate with the evidence. But for most Chinese companies, it would be easier because in China, the Chinese company, they will issue VAT invoice to their customers. And this VAT invoice, they can be traced in the open public database. So they are very strong in proof. And also, it is advisable to collect some delivery record and certificate of origin and customer clearance evidence. And these evidence are either traceable or they are issued by the authorities, which are very strong in proof. If these evidence they can collaborate with each other, I think they can form a, a very good evidence. But as these business instruments, you cannot see the actual products and actual trademark use. Uh, we think it is also advisable to submit some further evidence to collaborate with these business instruments. You can submit some catalogs, advertisements, exhibition photos, and media promotion materials. These evidence uh, will clearly show the use of the evidence. And if they can collaborate with other business instruments, and they will form a valid use evidence chain. And also, if you have some shops opened in China, and you can take some photos of your shops and also submit some uh, business license of these shops to prove that your 
products were actually sold in China, and you can also submit detailed information of these jobs. And also, e-commerce is quite form is quite. And also, e-commerce is quite popular in China, and you can also submit some sales records in e-com e-commerce platforms such as Taobao and JD.com. If there are some pages which can show your products were sold to Chinese consumers, and also there are some consumers' records or consumers' comments on these websites. During the period, I think it would be very good evidence to prove that your products were sold in China. But what is worth of attention that all the evidence we mentioned should be able to collaborate with each other so that they can form a complete chain of used evidence so that to be admitted. For example, if you sign a contract with a Chinese company, and you list your trademark into the contract, and then your the Chinese company are going to pay for the contract, and you can submit the payment record of the of the of of the bank, and to prove that the contract was carried out, and then your contract. And the buyers they will place place some uh, orders, and you can collect such orders. And these orders will will commonly they will listed some uh, model names and trademarks and the, the the product image. And after the products are completed and are produced, they are going to be delivered to the buyer, and you can. Collected such delivery records, such as DHL Korea uh, records, and after the products are distributed to China, and you are going to promote your brand, and you are likely to engage an advertising company to promote promote your brands, and you are going to sign a contract with an advertising company. So. Submit such contract and the advertising samples or the the advertising in the media, and also you can submit payment records、uh, of the advertising services. This can form a good evidence to prove that your trademark is promoted in China. And in the finally, in the sales and circulation sectors. It is, as mentioned, it is it is advisable to submit some VAT invoices. This is very good evidence to prove that your trademark and your trademark is used, and the goods bearing the trademark has been sold to Chinese end、uh, consumers. So different from other type of、uh, trademark cases, such as the opposition cases and the invalidation cases, you will have to establish that. Your trademark is famous or is very popular in China by submitting a lot of use evidence. In non-use cancellation cases, you do not have to submit a substantial evidence. Just some set of use evidence would be sufficient, and as long as the set of evidence could be、uh, form a complete chain, and they are going to be admitted. That's all for me for my pre. That's all for my presentation, and thank you for listening. Should you have any further questions concerning this topic, you can contact us. Thank you.